Character introductions in D&D or any other tabletop RPG can often feel somewhat intimidating. Many of you will probably be familiar with the feeling of pressure in these moments, since you really want to sell your character in those first scenes they appear in. You want to paint a vivid, imaginary picture in the minds of the other players with your descriptions, really embody their personality, and make the other players at the table interested in roleplaying with them and getting to know more about them and their backstory. Now, you've seen the title, so you know that this video will take a look at how Critical Role handles character introductions and why they, at least arguably, do a very good job. However, I want to point out that I by no means mean to imply that Critical Role is the end-all be-all of character introductions or anything D&D related. Depending on you individually and your group individually, these tips might work better or worse for you. It's not the one way you have to do character introductions, but rather one way that can work. Now that that's out of the way, I want to specifically have a look at the start of Campaign 2 of Critical Role, examining how this bunch of nerdy-ass voice actors has managed to, within mere moments, capture the attention of many members of the audience and how you can do it too. The campaign obviously starts with Matt setting the scene, but that part is really a topic for a video entirely on its own. Right now, we're interested in everything that happens after those dreaded lines... Liam, if you would like to describe your character, please. Before Liam actually even speaks his first words of description, I think there's already something interesting happening I'd like to point out. Oh, um... No. <laughs> <laughs> Were we supposed to prepare this? <laughs> no. Laura's no pressure, Sam's usual banter, all these things help alleviate some of the pressure from Liam, who is in the unpleasant position to be the first one to introduce this character. Sure, these are professional actors and they can probably handle the pressure just fine, but they still manage to create a very supportive environment that basically tells the person describing their character, this isn't that big of a deal, we're all in this together, let's have fun. You can't exactly do that for yourself, but you can certainly do it for the other people at your table, and let me tell you, they will appreciate it. And if you are a supportive player for others, that's one step closer to creating a supportive environment at your table. The next thing that happens, of course, is that Liam describes his character. Let's listen to that for a bit. I'm, I'm pretty filthy. Uh, I have sort of a, a, a mess of uh, reddish brown hair and um, uh, really filthy road clothes. I wear a long coat that I slept in. Uh, I slept about 20 hours last night. Um, uh, geez, unshaven, a bit of a mess. Um, so far you're just talking what about color current are your Liam eyes? right now. <laughs> I need visual. They're blue. Like it. There you go. Um, that's it. It was a rough uh, day yesterday, and um, that's, that's it. The description itself isn't actually all that lengthy or detailed. It's a rather simple description of some of Caleb's physical features. And as a comparison, let's listen to the character descriptions of Jester and Ford as well. Oh, well, okay. Well, I'm just, you know, a little blue tiefling, that's all, um, with blue hair, and um... You know, I'm wearing like a pretty cute dress, that's all. And uh, I'm having a good time, you know? We're just having a good time here at breakfast. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm here too. Oh, what? <laughs> oh, no. <clears throat> I'm, uh, I'm a half orc, sitting here in uh, kind of beat up leathers. <laughs> Have a big scar across my face. Do 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 do. Green skin tone and uh, kind of got some like piecemeal armor put together and stuff. But uh, my name's Ford. As you can see, many of these descriptions are actually rather simple. Sure, they give you some idea of what they look like, but they don't exactly create a super detailed image in your head. And I think that's really an advantage. When it comes to character descriptions, I think being brief is very helpful, as long-winded descriptions often lead to other players quickly losing interest. Also, I really think that what you describe about your character really isn't as important as the kind of vibe you portray. Very messy for Caleb, kind of excited and cutesy for Jester, and ruggedly charming for Ford. These vibes are innately present in their character descriptions, and they immediately tell you a lot about their character. 
Another thing that's worth mentioning is that all three of them do their character descriptions in their character voice already. Not everyone at the table does that, for example Sam only slips into character voice when not actually starts talking, but I think it's actually a strategy that's very effective. Usually your choice of character voice also has significance for your character, and presenting it with your description can really further heighten the vibe your character gives off. Another way to have character introductions run a little bit more smoothly is by already having established character relationships with one or more other characters, for example through your backstory. In Critical Role, this is very cleverly handled through the way that Matt structures Session Zero, as he splits the party into three groups that had separate sessions before the start of the campaign, and through that some character relationships had already been formed. The way I understand it, I think Caleb and Nod, as well as Molly Mark and Yasha, already had established their connections through their respective backstories, but Jester, Beauregard and Ford did only meet in that session zero. This gave Matt the opportunity to introduce the party in smaller, separate groups, and gave these groups the opportunity to roleplay for a little bit amongst each other, before fully merging with the rest of the cast. Even if your DM doesn't handle Session Zero in this way, I think establishing a backstory connection with another player beforehand can really help for character introductions, and can pay off in roleplay even far beyond that. Such a backstory connection also doesn't need to be deep and intricate, you don't necessarily have to be like Vex and Vax who were siblings and spent their whole lives together. It's absolutely sufficient if your characters have, perhaps, just met on a previous adventure and have since done a few jobs together. A similar thing is happening with Caleb and Nod, actually, as they met randomly in a prison and escaped together and have been traveling together since, but neither really has a deeper insight into the backstory of the other person. With such a backstory connection, you can talk with your fellow player about your very first scenes together before the session even starts, and think about ways you can both introduce your character in dialogue together. Within mere minutes, Caleb and Nod are established as trusted allies that rely on each other for different things. Nod apparently saved Caleb pre-stream, while Caleb keeps Nod's urges in check, and the fact that they have a vast number of tricks up their sleeves to cheat people out of their money shows that they have been doing this for a while. We could do the money pot, we could run rat food, we could do Prince and the Pauper to get it from them, we could try spider eyes. Additionally, they already established their character dynamic incredibly well within that first scene, with Nod serving as comic relief for a very serious Caleb. Having a character there that already wants to roleplay with you and that you can always turn to to roleplay when in doubt or when insecure can really help a lot. Now, I know what you're thinking. You've probably spent a ton of time and effort thinking of a creative, unique and complex backstory and an equally interesting personality for your character to go along with it, so of course you want that to be portrayed in your introductory scenes as well. However, in my experience, it's usually best to start slow, stick to the basics and build upon that afterwards. Caleb and Nod are actually once again great examples for that. I don't want to go into spoiler territory, so I'm not explicitly going to state anything here, but if you've seen more of Campaign 2 then you will probably be aware that both Caleb and Nod have very complex and tragic backstories, but these only come out at a much later point in the story. Instead, in their first scenes, they stick to some basic information about their characters. It's established that Caleb is a major bookworm. You need some books and stuff, right? Um, always. And that Nat sometimes feels the uncontrollable desire to steal something. Sometimes I, I get the itch. Both things that also hint at their respective classes, wizard and rogue. Both of these pieces of information also become much more interesting when you learn the background behind them and what their reasons for being that way are. Again, no spoilers, but I think you know what I mean. Character introductions are merely supposed to be your first impression of that character, so you can think about personality traits, habits and preferences one might immediately notice about your character and lean into those things. Whether you already have a backstory connection to another character or not, at some point you are inevitably going to have to form new relationships with the other characters of the party as well. This is probably the thing people are most scared of. It certainly is the thing I am most anxious about in my games. Especially if there are many players at your table, like there certainly are for Critical Role, the idea that you might fall behind and kind of get buried by the other players can seem intimidating. However, I think having many other characters in the party can actually be an advantage, because you get to pick and choose. 
Contrary to what you might believe, you don't necessarily have to form relationships with every single character in your party in the very first session. It's enough if you manage to create an interesting conversation with one of the other characters that can be built upon in future sessions. Sure, over the course of Campaign 2, every character develops a dynamic with every single one of the other characters. However, that's not the case yet in the first session, as that simply wouldn't be feasible. When the groups finally merge in Critical Role, we see different characters use details of the descriptions of the other characters to cause interesting roleplay to happen. Perhaps the most iconic of those scenes I'm sure you'll all remember. You should take a bath. You know they have showers here. <coughs> it's possible. A what now? You bathe yourself in water. No, I've, I've bathed before. Yeah, I know, I know what a bath is. You smell really bad and it's wafting over this direction. <coughs> I'm just letting you know I would, I would hate if I smelled that bad and someone didn't tell me. I have only just met you. Hi, I'm Jester. <laughs> Liam described Caleb as very dirty, and Laura caught that detail and created this gem of a scene from it. And for those of you that have seen more of Campaign 2, you'll know that this scene actually caused a whole dynamic between Caleb and Jester, and many scenes in the future are directly linked to this first interaction between the two of them. And you can do that too! Listen carefully when the other players describe their characters, and make a mental note of any of their traits that you find interesting, or that your character might find interesting. Among those things you noted, pick one that your character could easily directly react to, and most importantly, seize the initiative when your characters meet and comment on that thing. This doesn't have to be complicated either. Jester literally only comments that Caleb is smelly. If you have difficulties finding such things, think of similarities or differences between your character and the character of your choosing. For example, your big tall barbarian might make fun of the wizard for being small and puny. Or in contrast, they might immediately have a respect for the paladin, who's also physically strong. So, this has been quite the journey, so let's summarize. 1. Be supportive. Try to alleviate pressure from your fellow players and they might also do the same for you. 2. Instead of long-winded, detailed descriptions, try brief ones that instead focus on your character's vibe. 3. Try establishing a previous connection with another PC. Having someone already attached to your character can make many things in-game a lot easier. 4. Stick to the basics. Your character might be super complex, but first impressions probably aren't the place for those complexities. 5. When forming new relationships, pay attention to interesting attributes of the other characters and react to them with your character. I hope these tips may have helped to release some of your anxiety for your upcoming first sessions. Most importantly, don't forget that you are not obligated to be good at something you do just for fun. You do play D&D for fun after all, so don't forget to enjoy yourself along the way. If you enjoyed this video or it was helpful to you, I would of course appreciate it if you could leave a like, comment or subscription to tell YouTube I have worth as a person, and I'll see you again next time. Until then, have fun in your games, and stay delusional.